Hooks are one of the fundamentals of React and one of the most important tools in React development. Whether you're tying into a library that has its own hooks like Redux or different state managers, or just generally using effect and other things or use state within React, you're always using hooks. Today, I wanna to show you a couple of really cool libraries on how you can build out your own hooks. One that I would call pretty much the ShadCN UI of hooks, where you just go in and copy and paste the code so you have ownership of it, you have control, you can modify it to your needs, and then two other ones which are actually fully open source, so you could go look at the code yourself, but you can also install these all as libraries as well if you don't want to have the code in your code base. But I'm going to show you all of these while building out some really useful features on an example web page. So let's jump into it. Here on the left, I have a really basic Next.js web page, and it just has a search input which just returns the results as JSON at the moment, because this bit we're not too concerned about, so I haven't formatted this. But what we have here is this search input, and we have a problem here. If I type in, let's say, Oxford for a search for a university, you'll see in my network tab that every single one of these typed keys has sent off a network request, which is really inefficient. So the first thing we need to do is do a method called debouncing these, which is essentially, on each key press, wait a bit, until you confirm the result for that value. And then if it's key is pressed again, keep waiting. So the first way we're gonna do this is looking at our first hook library, which I think is the Shad CN of hooks, is use hooks TS. This is a really cool one. If you click get started, you'll see a list of loads of really useful hooks like use counter, which I'm sure all of you have written if you've done a basic React tutorial. And then just loads of different ones like use effect once, use element size, just some that people may have made before themselves, but you can just come in here and copy and paste them nicely. And they're all built in with TypeScript. The one that we're gonna concern ourselves with is this use debounce one. And as it says here, this helps to limit the component being re-rendered too many times and different things like that, because every time you're typing something, the value is changing. So if you're doing a use effect based on an input value, you're gonna to wanna to debounce it probably if you're doing network calls or anything else like that really. So it's really important. And yes, you come down here, you'll see it has an example usage, but then you just go down to hook and this is literally all you need. So we just can literally copy and paste this code into our code base and we can get started using this hook. So what I'm gonna do is copy this here and then we're gonna head over to VS Code. I'm gonna create a new folder called hooks. And then within here, I'm gonna create a new hook called use debounce.tsx. And then paste in our code there. Now, just a little explainer of what this is doing, obviously, a hook is essentially just using the different React functions within its own sort of component and returning values. But here, what it's doing is it's getting a debounce value and setting a debounce value, and then taking in the value that we're passing it which we'll pass it later when I show you the usage of this hook. And then it's just gonna set a timeout based on either time we configure by passing in a delay, which I'll show you later, or it's gonna be 500 milliseconds by default. And it's gonna handle that clearing of the timeout and everything for you in that use effect. So let's go ahead and use this. So as you can see here, what I've got is the entire page of what we've loaded in. I have an input. I have the on change event, which is at the moment using React's use state. And this is where we do our call to the database, which again, I wouldn't recommend always doing this in a use state. I'd use a library like React Query or Redux Query. But here it's a very simple example. So I've just got this running a fetch unis thing, which then just passes in that search value. But we need to make this use the debounce search value. So the first thing we need to do is use our debounce value. Come in here, we do const debounced search. And then we're just gonna use our new hook of use debounce. And then we're gonna make sure we import that from wherever we installed it. So here I have it in my hooks library. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that out the top here. If we do import use debounce, and then I'm gonna do from at slash hooks slash use debounce. And now we have our use debounce. Now the first thing it's gonna want is the value. So here we're gonna put in our state value because we still need to track every sort of key press that's going on in that input in our state value here. But then later on, this adds the logic for what we're watching for when we're fetching our data or sending a request to the network. So this is the debounced one. This is the one that's a bit delayed to make sure you're not doing on each press. And then you can also come in here and add a comma as well and then put in a custom time value if you want to change sort of the delay on each input press. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we use this. We'll change our dependency array here to use the debounce search. And again, we'll change the fetch unis bit down here to use the debounce search value instead as well. If I hit save on this and we head back to our application here, what we'll see now is if I start to type that Oxford again and I'll clear this so we can see it clearly. 
and I've spelled it wrong, but you can see the same thing there, is it's only sent off one request here for Oxford. We delete another one. Again, it's going to wait that 500 milliseconds before it does any request. So if I keep going back, you'll see that it, it waits and it's a bit nicer and it's essentially waiting for the user to finish what they're typing before it sends something off. So that was our first React hook library that we've looked at. As I said, you can also come in and copy and paste this, but you can actually install this as a library as well and import that separately if you wanted to. The next thing I want to add to this application that we've got is instead of maybe the debounce search, well, we'll use that as well. But what if I want to let the user be able to undo their sort of search values themselves? So I'm going to use a different hook library for this to show you. And this is another really cool one called use hooks. Now, this one is from the team at UI.dev, which do some really good tutorials on React and just TypeScript and React query. And they're just really good. And they literally have a course where you write all of these hooks yourself. So I highly recommend checking them out. This isn't sponsored or anything, just really cool company and team. And the hook that I want to use from them, and they have, again, loads of them, some of them very similar to the ones we've seen before. Again, you've got your use countdown, use is client, if you want to make sure that your code's on the client side, not the server side. Use timeout, which I highly recommend people sort of look at the implementation of these and add it themselves because you learn in sort of how you need to delete those timeouts in your use effects and um, in the returns. Use battery if you want to tie into the user's device battery status. Just some really cool things of hooks to tie into just various different things. And the one that I want to use here is called use history state. Again, this is really well documented on their site. It tells you all of the values that you're going to get out of this hook. They literally have demos for you to use. So if I typed in to do here and click add, you can see that this hook is going to handle undoing of the state, redoing of the state, clearing of the state, and it's called use history state. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. So I'm going to copy and paste just this line here, and we're going to go back to our code base here. So for this one, I'm going to do use history state, and then here I need to add the um, import for use history state. So that's going to be import use history state. And this now is from at UI dot dev slash use hooks. And then in this history state, I'm just going to simply define what we had in our value up here instead, as this is now what I'm going to be using to track my search state instead of this search value up here. So I can go ahead and delete that. So now down here, what we need to do is pass it state instead of that search value. And then debounce is going to work off of what we now set in state. And then again, down here in our input, we want the value to be state, which is just the name of what we've called that, and then set, which is our setter here. Now, what we should be able to do is add a button to undo the text. I'm actually going to copy and paste one in here that just has a load of Tailwind class names in it, so it's styled. But essentially, all we need to do in here is come in and we can say on click, and then undo. And then I'm also going to add one that says disabled, and that's going to be equal to can undo. And we're going to want to make sure that that's false. And there we go. So essentially what I've done here is I've added a button on click. When they hit, hit it, it's going to undo. And it's just going to make sure that they can undo it, aka there's some state to be able to un be undone. Let's go back to our application then. So here what you'll see is if I now delete this, the undo button has now become undisabled. And I can click undo and it will literally undo all of that for me. So all of those changes that we just made. And that's again another really nice hook. As you can see, we can click undo and it can undo it. And this supports redo, clearing of the state and various different things as well. So another really cool, useful hook that I've literally just imported from the library here. And then lastly, another really cool library you can use for hooks like this is Mantine. Mantine hooks, again, very similar to that use hooks and fully open source as well. So you could go in and see the source code for yourself. If you want to learn how to build out these hooks yourself. But you'll see, again, we've got a load of different ones, such as your use count. As I said, it's one of the most basic. Use pagination, so really handy if you're building this out yourself. Use toggle. And there are just some really cool ones that I didn't even know sort of existed in React, where you can use the document visibility to see if someone's switching to another tab and back and various different things getting the operating system of the user on your on your application. This one's quite useful if you're building out a website that has a download button and you support Mac OS, Linux and Windows. You can use this to tie in and see which download button you should show them first. So if you're on Windows, show them the Windows link. And there's another really cool one. The one I'm going to use from this just to show us implementing it is a hook called UseID. This is really helpful if you're building out um, forms and dynamically 
because it essentially makes sure that the label and the ID um, for the input have the same sort of binding and it saves them over re-renders just to save a little bit of time on React and it actually uses React's use ID hook under the hood as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this import. We're going to scroll up. We're going to import that. So that's use ID from Mantine hooks. It looks like I need to install Mantine hooks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So that's going to be pmpm i at Mantine slash hooks. We'll get that installed and then I will see the usage for this as well. So what we need to do is just do const UUID equals use ID and then you can pass it your own ID if you want to or it will generate a random one if an ID hasn't been passed. So if I go back here and go into our function here, we'll see that we have use ID, but here I'm just going to leave this empty. And now what we can do is actually we should be putting this in the input. Sorry. So if I scroll down to my input component, I've got a custom input component. If I put the UUID here, use ID, and then we'll pass in the ID prop, which can be a string or undefined. And then down here, we have that HTML for ID. I'm going to change this to UUID. And then down here, I'm going to change this to UUID. Go ahead and save all of this. And now if we head back to our website, what we should see is there won't be any visible difference. But again, if I type everything, everything's still working. If I go ahead and inspect the element here, and then click into this, you'll see that it's got a label that's completely randomized here, but it's the same on the input for ID and the HTML4 here. So it's kept track of which one we want. And as I refresh this, it generally should refresh which one it is. As I said, it's randomized. And that's just another really cool hook to use if you're building out your own sort of dynamic forms. A lot of form libraries have this built into them, but this was an example of how to use Mantine hooks. That's pretty much all I had time for you guys. As I said, that's all I wanted to discuss. It's a Shad CN UI sort of of hooks. I highly recommend going in there. There's one last thing I'd like to add on hooks though, and I, I do think it's important is I don't think you should jump straight into writing hooks all of the time. I think you should start writing hooks when you have two or three components sharing similar logic, not one component. I wouldn't jump to a hook straight away as it can sort of cause a bit of confusion when you're put like dislocating all of your code in different areas. So if you're only having using this for one component, keep it all in the same component unless it's getting really long and then maybe there's a case to move to hooks. But generally, hooks are just a really cool way and I highly recommend learning sort of how to write them. And I think this is a really important library to do that. As I said, I recommend as well, not even coming in here and copying and pasting, just learning to write it yourself and seeing everything it's doing. If you have any more questions, please leave a comment down below. Please subscribe if you want more web development, React tips, Next.js tips. I'm going to cover all of that on my channel. Thank you very much for watching.